today we play for the first place prize of $49,530 and a gold WSOP ring. After beating one of poker's legends Maria Ho and cracking her aces, there are 10 players left between Poker Glory and winning this tournament. We are about to make the final table in this high roller tournament with a big chip stack, but let's get this dub now. Let's get back into the action. As a recap, we bust Maria Ho in classic suckout fashion. Now there are 10 players left on the final table bubble and we see pocket sixes versus queen 10. Queen 10 flops the nuts, why wouldn't he? And now we are at the final table. Pocket sixes gets eliminated and now we go from 10 to nine handed and into the final table we go. We've made it to the final table, final nine, unofficial final table because it's an eight max tournament, but there's 49,000 up top and we don't need to talk about the queen jack first aces hand, right? There's no big deal, it's fine. Um, action's gonna be underway, it's gonna start in a few minutes, so just wanted to check in, final table bound. There's 49K up top and um, that's, that's it. Uh, locked up like 4,000 or something like that. So nothing crazy. Yeah, I actually locked up 4,000, so nothing crazy, but 49 is up top and we're gonna go for it. Have a big chip stack now after a dirty suck out. You can't win a tournament unless you suck out, right? Yeah, still feels bad to crack aces because her aces got cracked in the main event literally yesterday by my other buddies. So um, yeah, kind of feeling bad, but eyes on the prize, nine left, let's get it. Starting off the final table action, I pick up pocket eights in the hijack. There's a plus one open to 13,000, and here, happy to make the call. Everyone else folds. Let's go to a flop heads up. The flop comes king eight six rainbow. Obviously an amazing flop, but it's as dry as it gets. He decides to continuation bet 10,000. Here playing in position, don't think I can raise because it's hard to find many bluffs on this board. So I decide on just making the call and seeing what happens. The turn comes the king of hearts. Boating up, the board is paired. Brings that back to a flush draw and he once again bets out 25,000. And again, do I have any bluffs here when this king is so good for him? I'm not sure and happy to just make the call for now. Don't think I need to raise as, like I said on the flop, don't have many bluffs. And also, I just don't know what he can call besides having a king. So let's just hope to see a brick river or whatever. We obviously essentially have the nuts here. I make the call and we're off to a river, which is the queen of diamonds. Not the best one in the world as he certainly can have king queen or pocket queens as played. But surprisingly, he decides to go for a check. Wow. Very weird line. Obviously have the best part of my range here with a full house. And what should I do? Should I bet large? Should I bet small? I think when I bet large here, it seems to scare away a lot of bluff catchers. Like can't really get much value against hands like pocket jacks, tens, or even a queen if I size up really large. So I decided on a smaller sizing to 22,000 and he thinks about this spot for a while. And after his decision, he does the thing that I think I hate the most, which is a check raise to 78,000. Oh God. I take my time here and think this out because this is obviously a really weird spot with the full house. Obviously I have a very strong hand, but I don't want to give away a bunch of chips early on at this final table. I'm thinking that he's never taking a line like this with trip kings. I think trip kings is just so strong to bet, bet, bet all three streets and check raising here just seems like a huge overplay. I'm thinking in my mind that he has to have a boat and it's a tricky spot. Facing this raise here, it's only 50,000 more to call and considering the size of the pot, I'm getting four to one. Like no way I'm ever folding here obviously with the full house, but I certainly am uncomfortable at this spot as it's hard to find hands that I actually beat. After a long time, I just end up making the call because I can't fold and he surprisingly shows pocket sixes. Wow, definitely could have gotten stacks in on the flop or turn here, but I'm still happy to chip up in a huge way. Didn't get max value, but what a huge cooler set over set. Hey everyone, sorry for the brief interruption. I have a quick announcement to announce the winner of my WSOP experience giveaway people who don't know, this person that I'm going to announce will be flown out from wherever they live to Vegas, stay in a luxury suite on the strip, get their everything comped, their travel, their stay, and get a 2-5 buy-in comped 
and we'll play on the strip, play some T5 for the vlog, have a nice night of gamble, fun, and drinks on June 10th, middle of June for the WSOP event. So this person that I'm going to announce was picked from the members of the channel, so thank you to you guys. I'm going to announce a winner. If you're not a member, you guys can skip this for the next like 30 seconds or so. Big drum roll for the person who's going to come to Vegas with me. It is Brian West. Shout out to you. I have your email, so I'm going to shoot you an email pretty soon. Get the details figured out, you, and also please bring a friend. And when you want, you both will be uh, free rolling the weekend in Vegas with me for the WSOP. So thank you for the support. Thank you to everyone who signed up for the giveaway. And there's going to be a lot more coming. I'm excited to just give back to the people who've been able to just change my life. So I'm looking forward to the event. Shout out to Brian. I'll be in touch with you. And let's get back to winning this tournament. We're guessing onto level 19. Blinds have increased to 4,000, 8,000, 8,000. And I have queen jack of hearts in the small blind. There's a plus one open to 18,000 and action folds to me. This player has about 170,000 in his stack. So about 20 big blinds. And I think I could jam here sometimes, but I want to go for the lower variance route, which is just a call versus an early position open. So I do that. Big blind folds and we see a flop out of position, which is king 10, nine, two clubs. Just gin for us flopping the nuts. Of course, I check it over to him. He decides to bet 12,000 and unlike last time, I'm definitely trying to raise. There's a lot of hands we can get value from and a lot of draws we can certainly just stick piles in as well. So I decided to raise it up to 40,000. He snap goes all in. This is what dreams are made of. Of course, I snap call. And he has a hand that has plenty of equity. King Jack of Clubs. Not only does he have top pair, he's a gut shot to a straight that would chop. And also, of course, the flush draw. We're off to a run out. The turn gives us a straight flush draw. River fade the club and ship it. Bink City for us. I stack him. And all of a sudden, there are eight players left in this final table. One step closer to winning that ring. Shortly after that all-in, we see Ace-Jack versus Ace-10, hoping for Ace-Jack to hold, and the runout comes good. Ace-Jack wins. There are seven players left as Ace-10 is busted, and our chip stack is simply just growing and piling away. The next all-in we see is a huge stack with Aces versus King-Queen, and there is no contention, no sweat here. Pocket Aces stacks our opponent, and there are six players left. We've locked up 8,000 chips, and I am not the chip leader, unfortunately, with my massive chip stack. The player with Pocket Aces has been stacking everyone this entire day, so we got two really big stacks. I'm second in chips, but happy to go to the final six. Back into the mix we go. I have 10-9 of spades under the gun and raise it up to 18,000. Folds around to the small blind player who's been running super hot. He's the one that covers me at the table as the chip leader here. He makes the call and we're going heads up to a flop of ace, jack, five, two hearts. He checks it over to me and on this board texture with two Broadway cards, happy to just bet here, hoping to take it down on this flop. I size to 17,000 and he ends up making the call. Unfortunate. I guess time to shut down for the most part with a hand that really won't improve that much, but the turn comes a seven. He checks it again for a second time, and now I've improved to a gut shot straight draw. Certainly could bet this one now as I've improved to a little bit of equity, but I decide to just take my 10 high to the streets of the river. I check back, and the river we go, bink, eight. That's right, we bink the nuts straight on the river, runner, runner style, pretty disgusting. He checks for a third time, and okay, this is what dreams are made of, right? I'm at the final table, I end up baking the nuts, the best possible hand on this board, and I decide to go for a pot size bet of 80,000, and this puts this player into the blender. He thinks about it for a while and asks, why such a big sizing, and... Well, if you could see my cards, you know exactly why. He's confused at this situation and ends up sticking it in for a call. I show my hand, the nuts, and it wins. That's why I bet so big, because I sucked out and win a huge pot. So really nice to scoop a big one against the chip leader and suck out in a big way. While we are six-handed at my tournament, this guy playing for the ring. Good luck, Mike. After sucking out with 10-9, I pick up 10-8 offsuit in the small blind. Action folds to me, and the big blind has about 100,000 in a stack. There's only one smaller stack in them, and I'm applying maximum ICM pressure. I jam, and he insta-calls. We're up against King Jack offsuit, so we have a little under 40% equity here, and when the flop comes in eight, 
The run out is clean. I stack this player in, once again, suck out fashion. I do think that King Jack off probably could be a fold given ICM implications, but he went for it. I sucked out and there are now five players left. The chip stack is growing to a little over 900,000 and we see another all in. We have ace nine suited against king nine suited, rooting for the hand that's ahead right now and ace nine ends up winning. Let's go. Another player eliminated from this tournament. We go from five handed to four handed. Let's battle for this ring. Into the four handed action we go. I pick up jack eight of spades in the small blind. Action folds to me, and I'm happy to see a flop against the big blind. I decide on just limping and calling. Big blind checks, and we're off to a flop of queen, eight, five, all diamonds. Monotone flop here. Don't have a diamond, obviously, but I do have a gutter. I decide to bet one big blind, 10,000, and for one big blind, he calls. The turn is a nine now, and I think with a middle card pairing, I could go either way with the check or bet, and I'm obviously leaning towards the aggressive route, so I decide to bet 23,000. And for 23,000, he makes the call once again. So not feeling super happy about the situation, how it's going, but we're going to a river which comes in eight. I arrive at the river with basically third pair or bottom pair in this spot, and I've seen this player be super passive and very tight so far, folding a lot of strong hands with being on this final table. So I'm thinking that I basically just get to fold everything that he has besides a nine in this spot. I think a lot of flushes will already be raising on the flop or turn. So I think I folded all of his queen X holdings and other random holdings that beat us. I decided to blast out 80,000. Yeah, this 80,000 bet did not work as he calls with nine four off suits. So, well, screw me. Like I said, I thought I was going to fold out everything besides a nine, and he just unfortunately has a nine in this spot. So I give one of the smaller stacks more chips. Not ideal when you're trying to win a tournament. Next hand to go, I have ace five off suit in the cutoff, and I'm first to act. I raise it up to 22,000, and action folds around to the big blind player who decides to go all in. He has 152,000 total, it's 15 big blinds, and he's the shortest stack at the table. Ace five off suit seems pretty marginal in these spots, but four handed with this chip stack that I have right now, I can certainly survive a hit in need be, but. I gotta go with my wheel ace. I make the call and he has pocket fours. Oh no, you know that hand can't lose. And when the run out comes, fours is going to win, although it was a flip pre-flop, so not super upset about it, but have to say the pocket fours magic cannot lose. I double up the smallest stack at the table and now after giving him chips, all four of our chip stacks seems to be a little evened out with the shortest stack at 30 big blinds. The other two players with around 60 to 70 big blinds. We're playing plenty deep here at this final table, four-handed. Seems like it's going to be a while till one of us busts. While that hand happened shortly after, big congrats to my good buddy Mike for binking the WSOP main. He wins his first WSOP ring, and hopefully we can use his run good, transfer it onto us, and win this tournament ourselves. Progressing to level 21, finally see another all-in. It's ace-five offsuit versus queen-jack off, and we're rooting for queen-jack to win this one. Sadly, ace-high ends up winning after a runout and the small stack gets another double up. So been battling four-handed for a while here. Some more battling to do. In the next spot, I pick up ace four off suit in the big blind. Cutoff folds and the button who is the chip leader at the table opens it up to 25,000. Small blind folds and here onto us, happy to make the call with a good ace. Let's see a flop of six, five deuce rainbow. Flopping a gut shot straight draw for the wheel here, I decide to check. He bets small to 12,000 with one big blind. And on this board texture with ace high, I think ace high can be good here a lot of the time. And also with equity with a gut shot, I make the call. The turn comes the queen of diamonds, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and I decide to check here. He now decides to go massive, 75,000. Oh God, I mean, I know that the button's supposed to be raising super wide, but how often is he going to connect with this flop and... Maybe this turn? Unsure, but I do have a gut shot straight draw, and sometimes I think ace high should be good here a lot of the time. So if I face any aggression on the river, I'll most likely have to fold. But here, I'm sticky, I'm curious. I make the call for 75,000. Let's see what's going on here. The river does not bring us any help. It's the nine of spades. 
And here I decide to check with my ace high, just hoping he checks it back, and he does. I announce ace high, and he shows us five deuce off suit. Flop two pair didn't go for value on the river, but wow, pretty sick, confused, not sure what to think, but that's quite the hand to open on the button here, but you know what? That's good to know for the future. After tripping up in a lot of smaller pots, I have 1.2 million in stack, which is about 50% of the chips in play, and I pick up king seven offsuit on the button. I raise it up to 35,000, small blind folds, and the big blind player makes the call. We've been battling a lot. He's the same player from the last hand we talked about. We're off to a flop of ace, queen, nine. He starts with a check to me, and I start with a small bet on this board texture that should hit me a lot. I bet 20,000, and he decides on a call. The turn comes a board pairing queen, which I don't love at all. He checks for a second time and sitting with king high don't really have a whole lot going for me. And usually when the middle card pairs, it should be better for my opponent than me. So I check this one back. The river is now a jack. So I guess king 10 is a straight for Broadway and having a king is relatively relevant. He decides to bet out and lead for 40,000 now. And like I said, I think having the king 10 blocker is relevant here, although it is a paired board. And I decide to just think that having a king is good enough to bluff. I am the chip leader at the table, so I can apply a lot of ICM pressure with playing big pots and raising here. And I think if I raise, I put one pair of aces into a tough spot, I put a pair of jacks into a tough spot that was betting for value, I go for it. I'm never thinking I'm going to get a queen to fold, but I raise to 155,000. And this is quite a spot for my opponent because he thinks about this decision forever. While he's thinking, real time, I'm just staring at the ace of hearts on the board. Have to say that this card is embedded into my memory forever because when your opponent is thinking for so long, I just try to be as still as possible, not give off any tells, and... I just usually pick one card of the board and stare at it forever. Ultimately, he ends up saying he's making a really big lay down and says he folded a queen. No way. I talked about this hand after with this opponent and he tells me he folded queen five. So <laughs> got away with murder with this raise. You know, uh, the plan was to just fold out some aces or one pair holdings, but to fold out trips, whew. I guess my king 10 blocker worked because I get to get away with a big pot here. Progressing to level 23, it's been almost two hours battling four-handed and we see an all-in. Ace-queen versus ace-7 with ace-7 at risk and finally, ace-queen wins and we're now down to three-handed. This opponent lasted a super long time, played two hours playing four-handed here and it's nice to finally go from four-handed to three-handed. This is when the fun begins. Still in the same level, I pick up 8-4 offsuit in the big blind, button folds, and the small blind limps. Here, the strategy is supposed to raise some really garbage hands or some really good hands, and 8-4 offsuit definitely is in the category of garbage. So I go for a raise to 60,000, and he decides on making the call. We're off to a flop of 1085 rainbow and he checks to me. I think this is a pretty interesting spot as I'm raising some garbage preflop and when I actually flop a pair, now I turn my hand into value. So I decide to bet 90,000 here and for 90,000 he makes the call. Going to a turn which comes the 6 of clubs. So board is a lot more connected to a certain degree. He checks it to me and I think with just my pair of 8s I can relax, hit the brakes a little bit and check back. Now off to a river which comes the 10 of clubs, so feeling confident about my pair of 8s here as I don't think I really lose to a whole lot and it's hard for him to have trip 10s, he sizes up to 100,000. Obviously when I feel good about my pair, pairs are hard to make, especially playing 3 handed, I decide on making the call and to my surprise, he has 9-7 of hearts. Open ended on the flop, got there on the turn and this was a pretty big hit. Went from having over 50% of the chips in play, now down to 900,000. Chipping down and giving it to the wrong person. The very next deal, I pick up ace seven offsuit on the button and I raise it up to 45,000 when I'm first to act. Small blind folds and the big blind, who I just gave a bunch of chips to, raises to 155. Whew, okay. 
Interesting spot here, and I think I'm just going to go for it. I don't like folding, obviously, as you know from this channel, and I think I put a lot of pressure onto this player as I cover him. Trying to put his tournament life at risk. I don't really love this spot, but I'm just going to say F it. I go all in. He ends up folding, which is nice, and I get a little bit of my chips back from that last hand losing to his straight. This next hand here, unfortunately, I don't have the full notes on because we've been playing so many hands so quickly. I have ace-three offsuit, and I end up somehow playing this hand horrifically. I end up bluffing with four to a straight on the board and lose a significant chunk of my chips here. So this bluff didn't work out, and I went from having about a million in chips to 760,000 give or take in chips, losing a quarter of a million chips here, and not really having the full hand history is unfortunate, but I guess that's just what happens when you're playing so many hands at once, playing three-handed, and basically non-stop playing and playing poker and vlogging. This next hand, though, I certainly have the hand history for. I have ace-queen of spades on the big blind, trying to come back after my bad bluff. Button folds, and the small blind decides to limp have a premium, I decide to raise it up to 90,000, and the small blind doesn't take too long before announcing two words that we honestly don't want to hear in this tournament this late, but he goes all in, who covers me. I snap call because it's a premium and there's no way I'm folding this hand. I'm trying to win the tournament, and we're up against king seven off suit. This needs to be a massive hold. As much as my hand is ahead here, it's not ahead by that much. I only have about 60 to 65% equity and need a good run out to win. And I get a full double up. Bink City for us. A full double up of 767,000. And this was huge. Now my chip stack is about 1.5 million in chips. Well more than 50% of the chips in play putting both of my other opponents in a brutal spot. The next hand you see is aces versus jack-10 suited and aces hold. We are now heads up. Shout out to my opponent here. Good luck to David. There are 2.4 million chips in circulation in play. I have 1.5 million, so I have a slight edge, but we've been battling with this opponent for the last two days. He's certainly going to be tough, and one of us will come out victorious. In this heads up battle, we go for the ring and $50,000. I pick up 9-4 of hearts in the big blind. He decides to limp the small blind slash button and I check my option with a suited combo. The flop comes ace, nine, eight, rainbow. I decide to check it over to him with middle pair and he checks back. Turn comes a seven now, so card under my pair. There's some draws that could be had here. I decide to bet 30,000 for value and he calls for 30,000. Still feeling good about my second pair here. The river is a three, debating between a check or a bet, and ultimately I land on a check. Not sure how much value I can get from a pair of eights, a pair of sevens, who really knows, honestly. I think he can bluff more likely. So I give him some rope, and he decides to bet out 100,000. I have second pair, and pairs are hard to make when your head's up, and I certainly didn't check to fold my hand. I make the call for 100,000, and he has 8-7 off suit. So I'm going to take a little bit of a hit here. Stacks are a little bit more evened out, unfortunately. But after a little bit of battling, we arrive at this hand where I have the chip lead. I have 9-7 of hearts on the button. I limp my option here after playing a little bit, and he decides to raise to 80,000. Here, obviously, in position, very playable hand as they're suited. I decide on a call. Going to a flop of 9-deuce-deuce-rainbow. He decides to check surprisingly, and on this flop with this specific hand, it's pretty good, and I'm gonna bet for value. I think I can get value from worst pocket pairs, and get value from ace highs and whatever it may be. I go for a bet of 50,000, and he counts out his stack and goes all in. Oh my God. It's an all in of 670,000, and I cover him. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? I think about this spot for a while because I'm trying to make sense of what's going on here. He raised preflop, checks the flop now, and ends up check raising all in on this specific board texture. What kind of hands is he doing this with? And it's hard to imagine he's doing this with a hand as strong as overpairs. Just doesn't seem like that's possible because... 
the all-in is so huge compared to my bet, and wouldn't you want to maximize and milk out as much money as you can? And if you jam with overpairs, I'm going to fold a lot here because there's not really that many strong hands I'm supposed to have on this board. So he could maybe do this with smaller pocket pairs, like fours through eights, or he could do something with, I don't know, over cards? Like, I, I, I don't know. But I think my hand is just way too strong. He can sometimes have better nines here, but that's hard to have. We're heads up. There's only two other nines in the deck. Like, there's a lot of things going on in my head. And ultimately, I think that this hand is too strong to fold. If I call and lose, I still have a lot of life and our chip stack would be very even. But if I call and win, we bank this one. I take my time, flick in a chip for a call, and he has king, queen of hearts. Amazing as we block his heart outs and he only has two overs to hit. Let's fade them. Well done. Thanks. Congrats, buddy. Nice one, you did. Again, yeah. Nice one, the run out comes clean for us. 9-7 of hearts was the hand that eliminated us from the last tournament. And 9-7 is going to win this tournament for us here. Bink City for us. And we scoop up ring number three. Bink City, baby. Let's go. This one, this win meant a lot. Uh, mainly because this was right after the same week during the Hustler live stream where I lost a bunch. So this happened a little bit back and just really happy about the win, happy to report it. And it was a nice comeback uh, winning this tournament after losing a lot in high stakes cash. So um, this was really fun. Getting the third one of these bad boys is great. If it could ever just decide to focus. Winning one of these bad boys is awesome. There we go, finally focused. Um, third one, trying to add more to the collection, but um, yeah, this is sweet to have. Nice to have a collection of poker awards and trophies now. Fun fact, fun story is that my buddy Mike, who also won the WSOP uh, main event, who also won a ring himself, he also played in the tournament with Maria Ho on the same table and also cracked her aces. So that was really cool for him to stack Maria, cracking her aces, me doing the same thing, and we both shipped the tournament. Seems like Maria just gave us lucky chips. Um, at least her chips were sacrificed to a good cause at the very least. Sucks to, to crack the aces, but um, I guess that happens. Rather to be lucky than good. But thank you so much for sticking to the end. This tournament happened a while ago, so if you follow me on Instagram, you already knew the outcome and everything that happened to it. So for real live updates, follow me on Instagram, Rampage Poker. Follow me on Twitter, other socials, all that fun stuff. And I'm looking forward to the next one. Definitely more focused on playing some tournaments, so hopefully I'll make another deep run soon. Thanks so much for sticking to the end. I'll see you guys the next time. Till then, we're going for ring number four. This can't focus. You already know what I'm trying to do. Ring number four on the way.